joined by Marty Morningweg, inducting into the 2021 class of the Montana Football Hall of Fame. And uh, Marty, looking back, and uh, one of the great Grizz players and coming out of high school, you weren't the biggest guy as a quarterback, got passed over by some Division I schools, but Montana sure saw something, and you wound up being a four-year starter at Montana and set 15 school passing records in the process. Talk about that experience. I'm proud to be a Grizz. <laughs> I, I, the proudest thing really is we got that program turned mm -hmm. in a positive way, really at the end of 80 and certainly in 81, and then we won the big sky in 82. And I played with a lot of tough, tough men. And it was a street fight every ball game for us. Boise, Nevada, Idaho, the school that's in uh, Bozeman, you know, the, it's a fist fight every, and so I'm proud of my teammates and of the coaches where we were able to turn a program in a positive manner. And you talk about that turnaround and it's, it's hard to comprehend it when you think of Montana, Montana State football in the here and now because all that great success they've had over there, but it did need to turn the corner. I believe that was the first Big Sky title in 12 years when yeah. you wanted in 1982. Well, I know a little bit of history. Montana was just a great football team in those late 60s. And in the 70s, they had some great, great players, but the winning percentage lacked a big time. Mm -hmm. And then we got it turned in the early 80s and proud of that, proud of the teammates that I played with. At life after football for you pretty much began with coaching although you did do a year in arena football but like so many guys injuries kind of ended that uh, that run of playing and then you became a, a coach and assistant coach and for a while there for five six years you bounced around in several different programs and how did that start to develop your transition ultimately into the NFL those years as an assistant coach well I'll tell you I jumped into coaching and I was desperately still trying to play I was camp arm in the 49ers camp I played in the arena league and in fact I was coming off of an ACL injury surgery playing for the Denver Dynamite and I'm coaching the running backs at Northern Arizona and met my drop dead gorgeous wife who's also super smart you know on the way home from games she'll she'll be planning for the next ball game mm -hmm. uh, and she could probably coach the quarterbacks at any level right now just through osmosis and then we were married oh it must have been a year and i was still thinking i was going to play it takes you four or five years to get the playing out of your system and i coached a year of high school ball 10 years at college bounced around typically moving up and then got an opportunity to get into the nfl and man alive we had some great great hellacious runs and i told my wife the other day it's just starting girl <laughs> well you look at you have to be there, there can't be any other coach in the national football league that's worked with more great quarterbacks than you have and it seemed like every stop there was one or two great quarterbacks in the camp and it started with brett Favre, right in 1995 yeah. with the packers yeah, and Brett hit it right about then, and we, we go on to win the Super Bowl. And then I go, I was coaching the quarterbacks in Green Bay. Go from winning a Super Bowl and Brett winning the MVP of the league for, I believe, two straight times, and then took the coordinating job in San Francisco, and Steve Young's the quarterback. Mm -hmm. Those two men, both first ballot Hall of Famers, both totally different both on and off the field. Brett's black hat gunslinger. He's going to empty every bullet that he has. Steve Young, white hat, a surgeon. He was just going to cut you apart. Different styles, different people. I learned a lot from both of them. You know, when you're a teacher or a coach, you can learn just as much from your students mm -hmm. or players as long as you listen. And I listened to those guys, and they taught me an awful lot as well. Well, in all the years as an assistant coach with those great quarterbacks, you also had experience as a head football coach at the highest level, Detroit Lions. Yes. For two years. 
Yeah, it's about a half a cup of coffee. <laughs> well, no, that's a full cup of coffee. Hey, yeah, it's about a half. About a half a cup of coffee in Detroit. But we loved Michigan. We lived about 15 minutes from the University of Michigan. We were transitioning from up north to the new stadium and new facility. We still have great friends there. And then from there, I went to Philadelphia, a job that I had turned down about four years before because I said, Lindsay, who is my wife, I am not picking you and the four kids up from sunny Northern California, dropping you off in the middle of Philadelphia and playing at the vet, it's not going to happen. And then we end up taking that job and all of our kids now, if you ask them, would say they're from Philadelphia. We love Philadelphia. And so, and had some great runs in Philadelphia. I oh, know, oh, by the way, uh, Donovan McNabb, Michael Vick, Joe Flacco in Baltimore, Lamar Jackson, just a few yeah. guys that you got yeah. a chance to work with. Yeah. We are out of time. Congratulations, Marty. You're going to the Montana Football Hall of Fame. Pleasure. Anytime. It's great to be here in the great state of Montana and the city of Billings.